Why would a Native American in the Stone Age go through all the trouble of making this point sharp for hunting and then purposely dull one edge of it? We're gonna talk about that right now. In early North America, people were hunting large animals back then. So they needed a large dart, large shafts, heavy with a large projectile to penetrate these animals. But the problem that they had these darts were thrown. They weren't uh, shot with anything. So they didn't have the speed like a bow and arrow has. And because of the mass and weight of these large darts and shafts, when they would hit the animal, the sharp edge on the projectile would want to cut back into the shaft. And that takes a lot of blow away from penetrating the animal. So to remedy this problem of the uh, projectile cutting back into the shaft, what they would do is on a gritty piece of sandstone or whatever, take this point on the base and grind it to take that sharp edge off so it would be dull and not cut that shaft like that. Now I have an example of one of the tools, the stones that were used to grind those points flat on the back. It's a gritty sandstone, a little bit harder of a sandstone, but you can see this groove right down the middle of it. It's a little bit wide, maybe a quarter inch or so, where it's been ground by those point bases over and over and over in that one spot, making that groove in there. Now, a lot of times you'll find sandstones that are on the uh, river bank, usually below an old farm field, that'll have random, just sharp, gouge marks through them. They won't be uh, as centered on a stone like this. Like I say, they'll just be random, could be curved, straight. But what those are is they're marks from farm machinery, especially the disc machine, like this. But if you find a stone with a designated straight line straight across the middle of it, pretty much it was for uh, grinding something. And I think we have one here that was used for grinding the points and uh, the bases of these points. And if you watch any other uh, artifact channels on YouTube, you may see people find a arrowhead or a dart point and rub the base and say it's ground or that thing is polished like butter. Well, I just want to show you what a polished or ground base looks like as opposed to an unground base. Now this would be an example of an unground base. You can see on this point, the base on here is unground. It's a sharp edge still. And here is an example of a ground base on this very old point. You can see the bottom is just shining dull here. But in the area that I hunt, it seems to be about right in this area, right in here, that the points become unground. Something changed around 5,000 to 4,000 BC that they didn't have to grind these points anymore. I would say the game got smaller, therefore they didn't need as large of a dart so the shafts got narrower, a little bit shorter, but ultimately they got lighter to the point where that big bulky massive shaft wasn't causing the force to cut back into it with that sharp edge. And right around in here, darts disappeared altogether when the uh, bow and arrow showed up in the Ohio Valley. And you could make a tip for a bow and arrow just off a small flake of flint and pressure flake a triangle out of it just to be deadly on a smaller game. A deer easily killed by a bow and arrow because bows, they depend on speed and not force to penetrate an animal. They didn't have to have all that massive weight. I got to get down to the river. Rocky's texting me every half an hour that he found something. He wants me to come down there and get, so I'm going down there. I'm going to film that right now and uh, I'll try to get that on here in the next couple days. You come back now.